All right, guys, welcome back. Um, good job on the worksheet. <clears throat> um, I wanted to save some time at the end uh, in case there are questions either from the worksheet or from the uh, 8.1 sequences lesson. So any, any, let's start off with the worksheet. Any, any questions about the worksheet seem to go pretty well. There's just a couple things I want to point out on the worksheet. And, uh, you know, first off, we're getting into this topic of sequences and series. And, you know, they do mean different things, although they're very closely related. The sequence is a list of numbers. Might have a, might have a pattern, might not. Uh, most of the ones we're going to look at in here have some kind of pattern. And we can write up this A sub N, which is known as the nth term or the general term of a sequence. Limits are going to become, uh, are going to become very interesting in this, in this module as well, because what we're going to be looking at with sequences and series is whether or not they converge or diverge. A topic that we covered back with improper intervals, which are going to reappear next week as well. But that same concept, do the sequences go to, go to a number? Do the series go to a number? Are they well behaved? Okay. Um, so that's, that's why the point of this worksheet is just to get you used to some of the terminology um, you know, if you have a common difference, it's arithmetic, a common ratio is geometric. And then 8.2 specifically focuses on what are called geometric series. So when we sum up the terms of a sequence, we get a series. And that's when we're going to start to see the summation notation. Now, I kind of threw it at you today because you haven't gone through the 8.2 lesson yet until, until now. But we're going to get a little bit of practice with this summation notation on Thursday. Um, and hopefully by the end of Thursday, you start to feel really comfortable with it. And you, as you saw, you know, you got the formulas in um, 8.2 to do a finite geometric series, which are A and B here. And it turns out we can do infinite geometric series if we have a common ratio between negative one and one. So, we're going to be picking up with the geometric series on Thursday. And because we've already gone through the worksheet, we're going to focus more on some applications of geometric series and make it really cool. And if you know we need to, we can look at the uh, summation notation because we're going to see a lot of summation notation in this module. OK. Questions at this point could be about the worksheet, could be about uh, lesson 8.1. You can put, put it in chat or turn on your mic, whichever is, uh, whichever is more convenient for you. Anything you want to take a look at from the lesson or, or the worksheet? And guys, uh, hopefully you saved your work from the worksheet. You know, be sure to post that to the forum. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Knife. Sorry, cut you off. I think um, if you could maybe like uh, kind of explain the um, if, uh, how a uh, how to know if something converges if it's a bound kind of series. Okay. So there's two things going on there, and they're both, uh, we'll, we'll discuss them both. Oops. Convergent and bounded. Let's, uh, let's talk about, they're, they got, they're similar, but they're not the same. Okay, so a sequence is convergent if, if, it, if it goes to a single value. Right now, let's let's start because it's where we're going to head this uh, this module. We'll only talk about infinite sequences and series. 
Um, so a sequence is convergent if it has a limit. In other words, if we can say, okay, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals some value. So to, so to tell if something is convergent, really all we have to do is compute the limit. So let's look at a, an example of one that's in convergent and one that's not. So let's say our se sequence is general, its general term is given as one over n. Then to determine if that is convergent, well, all we do is we take the limit and we treat it just like we would the limit of a function, which means you know, we can use things like L'Hopital's rule. We can use graphical methods. This is exactly the same kind of limits you were learning to calculate in uh, Calc 1. Now, with a function like this, we have something where the denominator is growing, the numerator stays at 1. Or if we wanted to look at it graphically, it's this graph here. So as we go, as the inputs increase, we can see that the function goes down to zero. Because this limit exists, this would be considered a convergent uh, sequence. So as far as identifying a convergent versus divergent sequence, it really is just a matter of calculating the limit. Now it doesn't have to go to zero for it to be convergent. Uh, let's look at, you know, for example, if we had limit as n goes to infinity of, let's just say n plus one over n minus one. That equals one. So the sequence given by n plus one over n minus one would be convergent. Now, we'll spend more time on Thursday and next week talking about how to identify where the series is convergent or divergent. So today we'll just talk about a sequence. So an example of a sequence that would be divergent is anything that the limit doesn't exist. Uh, so if we had our general term be, let's say, e to the n, well, we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the n equals infinity or doesn't exist because it doesn't go to a single value. So this would be an example of a divergent sequence. So for sequences, convergence and divergence really just comes from the limit. As n goes to infinity, does the sequence go to a finite value or not? If it does, it's convergent. If it doesn't, it's divergent. Now let's talk a little bit about, oh, before we talk about bounded, what questions about that idea? And so conception, okay, great. So conceptually what's going on is we want to know if our sequence converges to a number. Um, you know, for instance, one over n, we have one over one, one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five. Those keep going up one over a hundred, one over a thousand, one over a million. What's happening is those numbers are converging to zero. So that's, that's basically what's going on. The way we can test it is with the limit. A bounded sequence, it means that the sequence is bounded somewhere, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's convergent. And it can be bounded on one side or it can be bounded on the other. Uh, the, one of the most common examples is a maybe uh, a sequence that would be divide, uh, defined by sine. Because if we think about what's happening now, now this is a sequence, so it would just be points. And these would be our points being generated by our, our, our sign. So 
So what we have is a sequence that is bounded on top and on bottom. It's bounded between negative one and one. But if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n, well, that's a DNE because it doesn't go to a finite value. It keeps oscillating. So this would be the example of a, a bounded sequence because its numbers, its values, its outputs never get bigger than one or never lower than negative one, but it's not convergent. Our sequence here, one over n, is bounded below by, by zero, but it's not bounded above. So that's um, what's going on with convergence versus bounded. Think of bounded as being you know, a line that the sequence can't cross. Convergent means as n goes to infinity, our, our, sequence, our sequence of numbers is going to a particular number. I don't know, I think I got it now. Okay, great, great. Because I mean, that's a, it's a good question. We haven't talked about bounded functions in this course. We talked a little bit about convergence and divergence. And they are kind of related because a lot of times, if we have a convergent sequence, just like one over n, it does converge at the same place that it's bound. So that'll happen more often than not. But they're not the same thing. Was, you know, bounded just tells us, hey, our sequence will never go above this or, or below this. And again, we could have a sequence that's only bounded on one side, it could be bounded above or it could be bounded below, or it could be bounded above and below. Convergence is gonna be the much more powerful idea going forward, because that's gonna be what we really care about. We care about convergence sequences, and as you're gonna see on Thursday and, and next week, we're gonna really focus on determining whether or not series were convergent or divergent. Questions about this idea of convergent uh, or bound? Okay, other questions from this first worksheet or this sequence topic? I know we're actually already a minute over. So I understand if you guys have to get going, I understand. Just don't forget if you, you know, don't forget to post your work to the forum. On Thursday, we're gonna be picking up with series, geometric series. We're gonna look at some applications of geometric series. What we're doing this week is building a basis for next week where we start to generalize and look at all different kinds of series. Okay, guys, if you don't have any questions for today, you've already got a little bit of a head start, <clears throat> excuse me, on 8.2 with what you did on the worksheet. So that lesson probably will, will seem a little bit familiar when you go through Thursday. And Thursday, we're going to get together and we'll look at some uh, applications, real world uses of geometric series. There's a lot of really cool applications of geometric series. I think we'll, we'll have some fun with that on Thursday. But if you guys don't have any other questions tonight, we'll go ahead and end there. Sorry for going a couple minutes over, but great job tonight. Don't forget to uh, post your work. Remember, you don't have to wait till Thursday to ask questions. You got the forum, you got online tutoring, and you can always uh, send me an email. All right. I will see you guys on Thursday. Of course. Great job tonight, guys.